Unemployment has become a big problem across the globe. And the problem is so evident, I don't even need to give any statistics about it. Just look around you and you'll find people who had graduated half a decade ago and they still don't have a job. You'll find people who lost their jobs and they're still struggling to get it back. The problem is so big that the countries that have the highest level of employment still hit hardly 79.9% means out of 10 people, still one to two people are unemployed. The problem of unemployment is generated from the employment, from the concept of employment, because the employment has become an opium of the people. Why opium? Because it gives people illusion. People live in the false sense of assurance and security. When I say false security, you look at the contracts. Most of the jobs are contractual means by the end of your contract, whether it's one year, two year, three years, you become a hustler. Before your contract expires, you have that, that sense of insecurity in your mind and heart if your contract is going to be renewed. When I talk about false sense of assurance, you look at your contract, you feel that by the end of your contract, you will have X amount of money hitting your bank account, but does it happen? No, because you certainly face some challenges on the way. You may be sick. You may have some other engagement that force you to take leave. If you just look at the statistics, as per the International Labor Organization, in year 2020, the total loss in the labor market was 3.7 trillion US dollars. To simplify these numbers, in India, we are 1.39 billion people. If we convert that money into Indian rupees and give everyone the equal share, each of us, even the newborn, will have 1,97,000 rupees. Can you imagine I'm talking about India? Every sixth human being on this planet is an Indian. So does it mean the companies are wrong? Does it mean they are not doing what they are supposed to do? No, not at all. They are doing what exactly they have to do. They must sustain. They must survive. To survive, they have to lay off people who are not that crucial for the organization during this critical period. In order to retain as many people as possible, they need to cut the salaries so that everyone survives. So where's the problem? The problem is actually in the mindset. We have the mindset of getting a degree, getting a job and becoming settled. Now, getting a degree shouldn't be the mindset. The mindset should be about learning a skill. Getting a job shouldn't be the mindset. The mindset should be testing your skills at the job. Your mindset should be able to test what impact you can create in an organization. Then getting settled. That shouldn't be your mindset. Getting settled means you get a job and that's your final destination. Not at all. Employment or the job is only one of the phases of your career evolution. The first phase is picking an interest. You decide, right, that I like computers or I like medicine. Picking an interest is the first phase. The second phase is learning the relevant skills so that you can do what you love to do. The third stage is testing your, your, those learned skills into an institution, an organization, doing a job. And the final phase is becoming independent, becoming an employer instead of becoming or remaining an employee. So how to solve it? It's not that difficult to solve. It's all about taking shared responsibilities. There are four key influencers. Number one, the parents and the teachers. They need to expose the kids. They need to show them different fields, different professions. They need to take the kids to the field trips. They need to invite professionals to give a talk in their schools. They need to meet different friends who are in different professions so that they can guide the kids. The kids pick the right interest. Let me give an example. In one of my last universities, a student studied for two years 
she was supposed to do three years course in Bachelor of Procurement and Logistics. She did two years, she drops out. She comes back after one year, meets me in my office and tells, Professor, I want to continue my studies. And I said, well done, that's a good news, let's start. She said, no, I don't want to study what I was studying. I want to study social works. And then I asked, what changed? I mean, you came to take admission, you already spent two years, you just study one year, you'll be able to finish your program because legally a three years degree program can be completed in five years, so you're still safe. And she told, no, when I was studying, everything was good, but I realized this was not what I would love to do. That's not where my interest lies. So she took one year leave, she explored herself, she started her own NGO. And she loved doing that. The NGO started doing well. And by the end of one year, she knew exactly what skills she wanted to learn. And that's the reason she came to university, not to get a degree, but to learn the skill. After that, the responsibility falls on the shoulders of the students. The students should study to learn a skill, not to get a degree, not to just get the marks. Remember, it's not your teachers or professors who are the real evaluators of yours. It's the employers who are going to see if your papers speak to your skills. After that, it becomes our responsibility as academicians, the universities, the higher education institutions to draft the curriculum, which is practical. When I got my first administrative duty, I really struggled. I didn't know how to look at the finances. I didn't know human resource. I didn't know marketing. I didn't know the legal aspects. And I had to learn on the job. And I wish I was taught these things while I was in the university. If I was taught entrepreneurship, financial literacy, human resource management, administration, my life would have been quite easy, right? Because at the end, we all need it, whether we like it or not. So it's our responsibility to ensure that we have these essential and crucial modules in the curriculum. And finally, the government. The government must provide funding to the institutions and universities so that they set up different incubation centers and innovation hubs where the students come with an idea. The ideas are tested, they are vetted, the students are guided, and by the time they finish it, they already have a business in their hand. They already have a finished product in their hand. And trust me, if all of us take our responsibility, do the right thing, the world will be a better place and there'll be no problem of unemployment.